Welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the Make2D function in Rhino 7. In this video we're going to convert our 3D geometry into a flat 2D drawing which we can then export out into Illustrator or any other 2D software. To use this function I've first created this simple 3D model here which has just been built up through a bunch of extrusions and the boolean tools to subtract and combine a few 3D objects from one another. You'll see that I've got them each on a different layer and this is quite important for later on in this video where we're going to be looking at how to retain these layers when we turn this into a 2D drawing. Now whenever you're setting up your 2D drawings of your objects that you want to create it's important to get the right view of your object to make sure you're kind of getting the right look for the image that you want to create. Usually the way I do this is I'll make sure we'll use the zoom selected tool by selecting the one of the main components of the object hitting zoom selected up on your menu up here and that focuses your camera in on that object. We can then zoom out and pan and our pan will be focused on the center point of that object we've selected. So it allows us to easily pick the view that we want of our 3D object in this case. Once you're happy with that view and let's say I'm kind of happy with this, we can then decide if we want to keep that as a perspective view or we can change that projection to a parallel projection here. You'll see the parallel projections flatten out the perspective, giving us a flatter model or a more kind of isometric view, which we can then tweak to tailor our specific kind of requirements for this image. If you keep it on perspective, we can then change that exaggeration of the perspective using this lens length. And the lower we do that lens length, the more exaggerated that amount of perspective will be. So it's always good to play around with these values to get the right look for the image you're trying to create. And in this instance, I'm going to just be using the parallel view from around this angle to get a nice kind of three dimensional view of my model. Once you're happy with those projections, we're then going to make sure we save this view out in case you want to go back and update it later. This can be done just in the view tab, going to set view and down to the named views option here. With that open, we're then going to just dock it onto the side here so we can keep it there for later and just click on the little save as button to save this view out and we're just going to save this as perspective for now. There you can see a little snapshot of that view has now been saved and what this means is if I then pan away from the object or we decide to kind of tweak any of these components I can then go back into here double click on my perspective and we can go back to that view as well. So it's quite useful if you're kind of tweaking any parts of your model or you want to sort of change things and then go back and snap back to that same view again. You can do so just using your named views here. So I'd very much recommend making sure you save your views out as you begin to use them. Once we're ready to turn this into a 2D drawing, I'm then going to just select all of the geometry just by clicking and dragging over the geometry here and type in make 2D like so into the command line. Once we do that we'll have this little dialog box that pops up and we're going to make sure we tick on a few options when using this make2d function. The first of these is that we're using the projection from this view here so it matches the view I have in my scene. The second is we're going to maintain the source layers here which will make sure that each of these objects on the blue, the green and the red layer are retained when we make that 2D drawing. So we'll then be able to kind of select the red lines from the green lines and the blue lines all separately from one another. Another thing I usually do is make sure I get the viewport rectangle which gives me a rectangle of the view I'm in which can be quite useful later on when trying to line up the view with other parts of this image. You may want to also have a scene silhouette that gives you a silhouette of the object which you can also add a line weight to and I'm going to just do that in this case here. Hidden lines turn on lines that we can't see behind the object and this might be an option if you want to add those in and you can see in the little preview here what those look like when added in. For this particular one we're going to keep hidden lines on and so we can see what those lines look like behind my object as well. Once you're okay with that we're just going to hit the OK button. And what will happen is it will then generate a 2D image from that 3D view and you can kind of see that in this view here. Now the main thing to know about this 2D image is once it's created it flattens itself down onto that sort of flat top view there. So in order to see this properly we need to go back into the top view. I'm going to move it just over slightly and there we can see 
our view has now been made in there with a nice kind of 2D line work on there. You can see when you make this, it creates a new bunch of layers for these views under Make 2D here. And these layers will match the layers I already have. So we have our hidden lines, which are the ones behind there. And we also have our visible ones, which are in our foreground there. And they're nicely kind of separated out into each of these layers. So we can select them later and add different line weights to them in other software as we go. So that was a quick tutorial on how you create a 2D drawing using the Make 2D function. In the next video, we're going to look at how to take this 2D drawing, export it out to Illustrator, and just add a few line weights and bits of color into this drawing. Thank you for watching.